Uh, welcome to the Banner Bunch. Pretty sure I'm recording. Recording? Yes. Okay. There we go. So, good morning. Standard schedule as usual. Standard agenda. We'll introduce us. I think everybody knows each other. Uh, then we'll talk about the state of the system. Uh, this is January, so this is our. I want this to be kind of our, our standard thing every January, kind of where we're at and where we're going. No we'll have questions for anybody that has questions, like Teresa. All right, everybody knows Kimmy, Mark, Tyler, Teresa. They kicked me out of the front row. <laughs> Lori, Carl, Lena is back in the office. Catherine, the noob. Uh, my name is Gabriel, and Michael Quine, our CIO. We can get another chair for you up here, Teresa. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's the <laughs> figure. <laughs> you don't want you to feel left out. So part of the uh, state of the system, why we do this, uh, uh, part of it's just a plan where it's the state unions in January every year, but it's also, you know, end of the year, everybody has a little time off, we all reflect mostly on family and stuff over our break, but when we get back here, it's a good time to start fresh for a year and have our resolutions and think about what we're going to do and where we've come from. Um, and it's something that we like to do pretty regularly on our crew. Whenever we have a big issue or something like that, we like to have a lessons learned. And we sit down and say, what went right, what went wrong, what, what can we do better next time? It's kind of that sort of thing. Um, so we'll go over what, we, what happened in 2016. And uh, we had a lot done. Uh, as I was telling it up, I was really impressed. Uh, we'll talk about where we're at, mostly about the baseline project, and then we'll look forward to what, what are the big challenges coming forward this next year. And we have a lot of them. So, 2016 uh, kicked off real early. We did comma matching. It was the very first thing that we really implemented. Uh, and there was a flurry of activity in January and February. The comma matching was the thing that we had Prep for at the end of 2015, the banner bunch. Uh, common matching is baseline functionality that helps around creating records in banner and making sure that we're not creating duplicates or at least minimizing that as much as possible. And we've at least seen a really big impact on our team, uh, the dirt folks, where it's it's not a cure for dirts, the duplicates in the system, but it's really a great trick. It, it minimizes them so that we can make it uh, manageable. And so we can catch the ones that are created and, and try to resolve those as, as quickly as possible. Um, and from our users, we've, we've heard good things too. Go match is pretty intuitive. Uh, it saves a little bit of time on, on searching. Uh, and, and we like it. It's, it's really kicked off a whole year of improvements that we made with DIRTs. Anyways, uh, we formed a DIRT team. Teresa's leading that. Uh, made up of people in each functional area that really know the data and can help us consolidate the information from a bad record to a good record, help us remove it. Um, we're creating jobs, Carl's created a job at the end of the year uh, that'll help us identify, is, is a record really a duplicate or is it just two people who are really similar? And which one should be the bad record and good record? Uh, Dirts are something that with a large database, these duplicates are just gonna happen. Uh, it's one of the natures of the beast. And so uh, it's a long game to just keep improving that over time. And I think we've got a really good foundation for that. And that's how we started out the year. The other big thing that we started out last year with was updates. Uh, I don't know if, how many of you remember that, but we had a massive push back in January and February last year. Um, we had, before 2016, we'd gotten to a point where we were about three or four years behind on update, updating our system. Uh, which over time can become a bigger and bigger issue. Uh, part of that at the end of 2015 was the one person that was handling the duplicates retired, or not duplicates, I'm sorry, updates retired. And so we had actually lost all the knowledge on our team as well. And so we went through a big push to learn how to do updates, how to do them correctly, and then we pushed three years of updates in, in about two months and thankfully didn't blow up the system. <laughs> Uh, it took a lot of planning. Uh, Carl and Tyler put a ton of work into that. Mark helped out. Kimmy's been helping out. And then since then, every quarter, every calendar quarter, we've kept up to date. We've made a plan at the 
MBA in the quarter, got things into development, assisted with testing, and enrolled into production by the end of it. Uh, this first quarter of 2017, Kimmy is leading the charge. And I think Carl's back in her own. And we've got a bunch of tax updates we have to do this month. And then we've got more updates. Uh, I can put out a schedule here in the next week or so. And uh, it's becoming operational. Updating the system and keeping us up to date is something that we do now. And it's, it's uh, working very well. About the first half of last year, we also focused on Clean Address. Clean Address is software that helps us uh, maintain all the addresses in our system, the mailing addresses. So if they're up to post office codes, they're valid addresses. Uh, it's a tool made by a company called Runner Technologies, and it's a really, really good tool. It's a gold standard for banner schools. Uh, we had owned it for about a year previously, but we got around to finally implementing it, and it wasn't a plug in place or an implementation. We had coding that we had to change, like all the county codes, I don't remember, didn't match up with the national standards. We had to convert all the codes in our system. Uh, Part of implementing that is also cleaning up all the addresses that are currently in our system. When we went live in July, Mark ran about a half million addresses through the system and cleaned them all up. So now that all of the addresses in our system meet post office standards, and any record coming into the system is clean to start with. Uh, it's been a great tool, and the clean address is something I've had experience in the past and we've always really appreciated. <laughs> Uh, the other big thing that came out of last year was the Banner Baseline Project. That's something that I know the school had talked about, and we had talked about on our team for years, but it never really gained a lot of traction. Uh, last year, uh, Michael and I worked pretty hard at the beginning of the year to figure out how can we create some structure around this to make it successful. Because it's something we have to do. Uh, getting to baseline is something that's critical. It's, it's, uh, in order to upgrade the system and keep it maintainable and turn on cool new tools like DegreeWorks and the mobile app or something like that, we have to be as close to the way the product's delivered uh, to make that, that work here. So we put a lot of project management structure around it. Uh, we spent a lot of time with our functional areas discussing definitions, really what is this project? What does it mean when we talk about different pieces of the system and, and how the system's different from the way it's delivered from Lucian? Um, we also charted the project. We actually got an executive sponsor, Dave Henderson. Uh, we report to him on this project. We're accountable for being successful on this project. And we meet with him on a monthly and regular basis to report where we're at, what we're planning, and how things are going, uh, what we need and what we don't need. And so far, I've been pretty impressed with the way that project's gone. And I've got a whole other slide we're going to talk about that next, because that's currently our number one priority. That's what we're working on. Uh, at least 50% of our time, you know, when we're not doing fixing things that are broken or updating the system or working on other projects. And the other thing that came out of last year, we've been able to, some of the reason we can get a lot of this done is we've been able to augment our team. We've been able to get more resources. Part of that's really visible. We've got Catherine. She started in November and she'll be here for two years. Uh, but we also have been relying on Lucian quite a bit. We've got some elevated support from them, so we can refer to them sooner, uh, get cases resolved faster. Uh, we're also bringing in consultants. Next week, we're going to have a consultant coming in to sit with HR, walk through a whole business process now, so we look at how we're using the HR module banner and how can we do it better and, and what can we do differently uh, to make it as efficient as possible. Get the most out of the system. We've also got student consultants coming in. Uh, there's one coming in at the end of the month here that's going to help us start really getting ready for degree works. Uh, and having those experts come in and help us uh, really shortcuts a lot of the development. Uh, gets a lot of our answers, uh, questions answered quickly. And uh, I really appreciate the effort that they put in as well. Lucian's a great partner for us. In addition to that, back last year, I've already moved to the next slide, but um, one thing I didn't mention is that that's just the highlights of what we did last year. We did a ton of extra work on that, uh, on projects that were big and small throughout the year. I was looking earlier this week at, we have a system called CSRs, our customer service requests on our team. We completed 43 major CSRs last year, and that's above par for our team. I look back over the past 10 years, some years we've had 20, some years we've had 60, but uh, 
uh, 43 was quite a few, and that's just the major efforts we documented. There's a lot of other work that happened on this team. Uh, it's just the break fix sort of things or day-to-day -day operations that we didn't capture that. Way. So there's a lot of work that happened last year. Um, so the baseline project, this is what we're currently focused on. Uh, we've got a few other projects going on like academic works and uh, Oregon Promise and whatnot, but baseline is where we're focused. And last summer we spent about three, four months building an inventory. Uh, before we had started this project, we knew that we were different from the way that the product was delivered by Lucian, but we didn't know how different. We knew there were modifications. We knew there were things we, were, we had built that were new to the system, but we didn't know what all of them were. Uh, we lost that knowledge over time. It had never really been documented uh, uh, 100%. So we built an inventory, and when that was completed back in September, we can tell you now exactly where we're different. We've got a master inventory. Uh, in fact, I can show it for a second here if you want to see it. Um, how do I share differently? You can share the desktop. We've got a spreadsheet that we're maintaining that's got over 5,000 rows of data in it. And we're keeping track of <coughs> where our modifications are, <coughs> what the notes say that they do, who we think owns them, uh, all sorts of information in here. And we've been able to condense that down into a summary that I put out last uh, October when this was done. It's about four pages and it clears up all the definitions of what we have, where we're modified, where we have that new, and what we think the plan is going forward. Now, the inventory didn't solve the problem. It just let us know where we're at. Where, where is all of our stuff? Since then, we've taken the inventory. We began meeting with all the different functional areas on a bi-weekly basis to look through every single row in that, that spreadsheet and say, what is this? Why are we modified here? Why did we build this? What value does it provide? Who's using it? Well, is there a baseline way to do this? Is there not? Uh, how would we do this if we hadn't built this on our own? Uh, and we've learned quite a bit. One of the things we've learned is that there's a lot of stuff out there that we have built in the, in the past and then stopped using and nobody's using now. So the uh, past couple months we've actually been spending a lot of time just cleaning up a lot of the low hanging fruit uh, and obsolete things that nobody's even using. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time maintaining them, but they, they provide no value. Well, they provided value 10 years ago and, and now it doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, after all of that's cleaned up, these are the major efforts that are left over. And a few of these are actually completed. Phi Theta Kappa had a couple of screens that we built into the system that we've just obsolete because they can get the information elsewhere. Um, person searching, last month we did a banner bunch on. We had changed the way the person searching worked in banner, and it wasn't really that far off. We had just changed navigation. So we baseline that. And people are using baseline person searching now. Um, one thing I did put on, on here is hotkeys as well. We baseline that. Placement test scores functionally have been obsolete for six months now. We're no longer using the functionality that we had built, uh, but it's still in the system. So Timmy is doing a lot of analysis on how we can remove that from the system without losing all the data and, and making sure that we don't break something in the process. Um, direct deposit, we know that uh, the functionality that we've built for direct deposit is actually all available in Banner 9. So our plan on that is just to wait until we get to Banner 9 and then as we migrate to that new system, we'll take out the modification to move up. Uh, fine grain access control is something that gives us a little bit more granular control over what, what sort of fields people can access in Banner or change or see. Uh, we've built a lot of modifications to Banner that did that same thing. And so as we implement fine grain access control, Teresa and I are working on that, uh, we'll be able to obsolete a lot of these modifications that, for example, the email addresses where nobody can change email addresses. We don't even modify that. We can actually put fine grain access control over that and then only give certain people access to, to change email addresses. Check-in stations are right now in kind of a discovery phase. All the check-in stations across campus, uh, 
we're looking at the mayor is spending a lot of time doing analysis on why are people using these, uh, especially for FTE, where is that being captured, uh, and how can we do that otherwise? I know that they're used for attendance tracking, and so we're having conversations with people about, well, why don't we use Moodle for that, or wait for banner, or spreadsheets, or whatever makes sense. Um, or if it's being used to track students, like up in the learning center, they track students as they move around. Uh, Tutor Track, another tool we have, has the same sort of functionality as check in, where you can have a kiosk where a student checks in at each section of the, the process and you can see where they go and what resources are being utilized. Um, that's one that's going to take a while, but we're, we're already in the way of uh, figuring out how to maintain that going forward without all this net new system built on the side. Uh, Elaine over in financial aid knows that we need to get to baseline SAP. She wants to do that. There's a few uh, dominoes that have to fall away for that to happen, but we're already working on that. Uh, cohort, Tyler will be working on, on moving cohort. That's usually used by college now. Is mostly what's using the cohort system that we built. And we've already had conversations with them that we could be using attributes in banner or a student type or classification. There's different ways to make that happen. Project management, uh, Catherine is doing a lot of analysis right now. And we've had a few demos of project management tools that we can use. The CSRs that I mentioned earlier are a net new system that we built to, uh, inside banner to do our project management. And there's really not a need for that. It, it works. We've been using it for the past year and a half since I've been here, and it works pretty well. But there's other tools like Basecamp or Jira or Podio or or even you know Word and Excel if you had to to manage projects. Uh, so you don't need to change a banner in order to do that. Proxy access refers to FERPA. Um, we built a, a form and banner that actually works really well to capture whether or not a student is going to allow their parent or third party access to their information. Um, banner has a system called Proxy, Proxy Access. It works in the way. I don't know a whole lot about it, but that's the direction we think we're going to go with that one. Um, Black Friday, we have a pop-up in self-service that we could probably handle with info text. We'll get to that when Black Friday gets closer. Uh, instructor approval and part-time faculty both are uh, larger systems that impact our part-time faculty and are heavily used. So those two are going to take a lot of planning if anything's going to go away. Uh, if we're going to transition to any other sort of tool or baseline functionality, that's one that we're going to be looking at next week with uh, John Briggs, our, our HR expert that's coming in. Um, there may be other ways to handle that. These ones are going to be bigger projects. And probably the biggest project is job submission. Everybody knows about Schwartz. And we've talked about how Schwartz will eventually go away. That doesn't mean that the jobs that we run, the processes and reports that we love will go away. That means is that Banner has a job submission, a, a framework to run those jobs in. And we built our own on the side. It works amazingly well, but it's, it doesn't make sense to maintain two ways to run programs. Two different types of operating systems essentially. So baseline right now where we're at is where we have done a lot of analysis, we know we need to attack and now we're trying over the next six months to get all of this completed. Um, in the case that any of this isn't completed, the only way we're going to be successful in this project in June is if we have a plan in place. We've documented how we're going to complete this in the future. Uh, kind of like direct deposit. That won't happen by the time June comes here, but we know exactly what our plan is going to be. It's going to be turn it on in Banner 9. So we're already starting to talk about 2017. The first half of the year, baseline is still going to be our priority, our remote priority. The next priority that's coming in right behind that is degree works. And we're already beginning to work on that. Okay, so we've got a student consultant coming in next, uh, at the end of this month to help us work through some issues. Uh, we could turn on degree works tomorrow and it would break the minute we turn it on because we're using certain parts of banner, even if those are their baseline, like the level codes, we're using them in ways that degree works doesn't expect. So when we turn on degree works, it won't work for us. So there's a few projects that we've got to take on before we even get to the point where we can try and do that. We think that if we're successful through all this, we could probably go live with the reworks 
fall of 2018. That's what we're aiming for. But we've got about a year's worth of work before we even get to start implementing that. Uh, level code is one that we know about. We use different level codes for curricula versus the student. Ban Banner and viewers expect those codes to be the same. And that's a major undertaking because we've got a half million stu active students out there that have codes that don't match up and we can't go through manually to touch all those. Uh, in fact, automating touching all those is scary. So that's one of the reasons we're bringing in consultants is to figure out how to unravel that. Part of that's going to be uh, building a readmission process. We have a process here at the community college to just admit people once and they're students forever. Um, that's not typical. Typically, people would cycle out. They're, they're still admissible, they're still students, but they're not active students. So there's a way to distinguish that in Banner. We don't do that here. So we're going to move to that process where we have maybe, if you registered in the past year, then you're an active student. But if we haven't seen you in a year or so, you'll become inactive and you'll just have to let us know if you want to come back. It'll be a process, right? It's called readmission. And it shouldn't be a barrier. It should be something that's really easy for somebody to do. So turn my student record back on and take another class. Um, but in order to do that, we need this consultant. We'll look at registration status codes. We're going to look at the way it interacts with uh, financial aid because degree works uses a different system than CAP, which is what we're currently using for financial aid and tracking degree audits. Um, there's a lot of foundational work we have to do for degrees, and we're already prepping for that. Uh, Mark is spending a lot of time on Aleutian Solution Manager. That's been his focus for the past year. And what that is, that's a tool that helps us manage our servers. Uh, it's on the technical end of things, but uh, we need to have Aleutian Solution Manager calculus with these upgrades. Right now, it's a very manual process for our programmers. ESM would help with that. Uh, ESM would also help with managing the new hardware that we have that we haven't moved to. So we're getting that in place. It's also a requirement for Banner 9, as well as single sign-on. Does everybody know what single sign-on is? It's essentially, if once you sign into one system, it can share the credentials with other systems. So you can sign into Banner and then Moodle would know that you're good and just sign you in automatically and you have to type in your password again. That sort of the concept. Uh, we have to have single sign-on in order to move to Banner 9. It's one of the requirements. Do you know, so at OSU they have single sign-on, mm -hmm. but they don't have single sign-off. So when you back yourself out, you have to keep logging <laughs> off it, it, everywhere you've been, it's an independent log off. Um, and I'm wondering if, will that be our case? Did you know that? You probably know that. Well, now I'm wondering about that too. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really focused on, uh, the technology is really focused on signing people in. I don't know if there's a lot of focus on signing people out. Um, part of that might be handled with just Active Directory. When you log off your computer, you would log out of everything else at the same time. But um, that's interesting. I'll have to bring that up at our next SSO meeting. And uh, we'll think about that. Yeah, I didn't know that was an issue. Well, I just, because I, mm -hmm. when I was at OSU, I discovered it, and Greg and I used to joke about how I could get back out. We have to keep saying, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, and all, everywhere that you've been, mm -hmm. you get another screen that pops up and says, you know, oh, I'm, I'm still here. Catherine came from OSU. Do people still, even yeah. talk about single sign-off there? Yep. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Anyone yeah. heard of that? Well, I mean, and maybe that. If you, if you close the browser, you should be oh, automatically okay. So maybe it was that, simple that, as that, and I'm just so paranoid. Yeah, the, the session mm -hmm. token that would authenticate you to all those sites once you close your browser. Then you're done. Yeah. So, so the next time you open another browser, you have to start logging you got it down yeah. and all over. Yeah. Um, we'll bring that up though. That's yeah. worth looking into. I've never thought about it. Um, so single line up, single sign on is going to be one of our projects once ESM is up. In fact, it will probably come with it, become available, and then we'll start connecting systems to it. We're working with the network team and and uh, the hardware team on how we make that work here on our campus. Uh, Banner 9 is, is kind of that, that uh, golden egg at the end of the road that we keep looking at. We'd love to get to Banner 9. Uh, the more Lucian releases for Banner 9, the more we get excited about it. Uh, I'd be happy to show anybody about what it looks like and what to expect when it gets here. Um, it's, it's a leap forward in the user interface. Uh, 
if you if you really like the functionality in banner uh, IMB, the the standard banner screens that you go into, all that functionality is still in banner nine, but they changed the way it looks so that it actually it looks like it came from this decade, right? <laughs> um, it's a lot more intuitive. It gives you a lot of functionality that you'd expect from a web-based sort of service. Um, we really want to get to Banner 9 too because it's based on some technologies that are slowly going away. You can't use Chrome now because it doesn't support Java. Pretty soon, Firefox will be the same way, and Internet Edge doesn't make it really easy to make that work. So uh, we're going to have to get to Banner 9 sooner or later. Uh, Banner 9, if we're baseline, makes a lot of cool things uh, possible in self-service as well. You know, having some of these photos available and consolidating all the information together for advisors and for folks that deal with students. Um, the employee profile is pretty amazing in, in Banner 9 self-service. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You want to get to it. The, the mobile app would work very well with Banner 9 as well. Uh, one of the tools you may not have heard of is ISSM, the International Student Scholarship Management. We're working with the international folks and the registrar's office to turn on that tool. It will help us manage our, our international students a little bit closer and report better to Homeland Security on them. Uh, if anyone's gone to OSU in the past few years, it's very similar to a tool called FSA Atlas. Uh, another tool for our foundation is Academic Works. Tyler's helping them get that up and running. So we've got a lot of projects for this year. These are all big projects, and we'll probably have another 40, 50 other little projects that we can work on along the way. Uh, this is where our focus is at, and, and this is a pretty ambitious year, but I'm, I'm fairly confident we can get to it. Um, one other thing I want to mention, too, before I, I go into questions, this is actually a slide from last year. This is what we presented in our standard system a year ago. We were going to focus on infrastructure, we we're going to focus on banner, we we're going to focus on projects, and we've actually shown that we had done that. Uh, but one thing that I mentioned last year and I want to mention again is change. We're driving a lot of change on this campus by doing these projects. Um, and we want to be very uh, conscious of that effort. We want to manage change here very carefully. We want to make sure people are in the loop on when we're changing things. We want to make sure we're communicating. We want to make sure we're, we're doing training uh, so that we don't catch anybody off guard or pull the rug out from anybody. We don't want to know. The work we're doing should be making your lives better every day. And I think we've actually accomplished quite a bit of that. I think we've done a pretty good job. And there's always room for improvement, but that's going to continue to be our focus is making sure that when we change things, it's done in a, in a knowledgeable and planned out and well thought way. Um, the other thing on this slide that I also want to point out, one of the reasons I put this in here is I can't say enough how proud of I am this team. We have a very strong team on this campus. To be able to do this amount of work with three people, now four programmers, and Lori and Teresa and Lena and everybody else, uh, I am just constantly amazed. Uh, and, and honestly, I think they all deserve a round of applause. I think they're fantastic. Thank you. So, questions. You can have questions about where we've been, where we're going, or it can be questions about anything. So, go ahead and open it up. What are you saying, Debbie? <laughs> 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 How, how have we done this past year? I mean, we did do a lot of work and did a lot of change. And the read that I get is that we're doing a pretty good job, but I always, I like the compliments as much as I like the complaints. I uh, really need to hear everything to make sure that we're on track. We still struggle a little bit in web runner in the advisory faculty section. Mm -hmm. It doesn't flow as easy as that the information in there isn't always exactly what we're looking for, so then we have to go to the other and double check, like to get some numbers and some kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we work with it, but it's, it's not, it's a bit of a adjustment. Yeah, I remember when we moved from class information bringing the homegrown system to the baseline at the advisor self service. Um, that's when we really started begin focusing on change because honestly, the change wasn't managed well enough. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we I think we've shored up most of the functionality with other other ways of doing things, getting class lists and rosters and that sort of thing. But um, I'd love to sit down at some point and either give more training on faculty self service. We did a banner bunch back last February and March on this. We definitely could revisit it. Um, or even visit each individual area in each department or college and give a little bit more one on one uh, sort of conversation about what works, what doesn't, what can we change and have control over versus what are things that we might have to just look to the future for banner nine? Because it will get a lot nicer in banner nine. I promise you that. Um, I'll touch base with you. Let's we'll see what we can put together. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's nothing that we don't work around. Mm -hmm. It's just point to your <laughs> Another thing I have to admit is that Banner tends to focus more on the administration as a tool than faculty and students. I mean, self service is always there, and the, the web apps, web permission, and web prospects. Uh, but the focus is, is more on the administration. And so uh, I've begun managing the, the Moodle team as well uh, recently. And I'm starting to spend a lot more time focusing on, on what are the faculty needs and student needs in this campus so that I can understand what you do day to day a bit better and, and how are the tools that we have banner or Moodle or anything else uh, going to help you accomplish your, your job. One simple frustration in self-service is when you do pull up a class list or an unofficial transcript or whatever and you print it out, mm -hmm. it, cut, it cuts, it'll like cut the page right in the middle of a student. So you have half of the student's name and then go on one page and so you, then you usually have to get a pin out and actually write that person's information out. How interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And that happens a lot. Well, definitely and it just that. depends on how many students are in the class and if it does break across the page, it almost always breaks right in the middle of the students. Yeah, I wonder if it's because of the way the browser is displaying and it's cut it off the yeah, board or something like that. <laughs> Let's look into that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Other comments, questions? Kevin's not usually shy. Can you give your copy? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I was thinking there's not any of you that have done something that you put the here, so thank you. There's at least two major processes that I have that uh, we found either partway through or right before we started them that we needed a more recent version of Banner. So those three years worth of upgrades you were talking about, mm -hmm. if this team hadn't undertaken that when they did, we would have been left with having to come up with a totally separate manual process. I think for huge, really time intensive things. Mm -hmm. So the work that you have all done was saved, at least for me, I'm not sure a lot of people, but maybe several hours. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I know we're already looking ahead at 1098s for this year, and that's the thing that in. Yeah. Um, going to be helping us in the for that and push that up in the schedule because we can get it. So that's one of the exactly the This upgrade cycle will actually be a little odd because it's also year end. We will have a an abbreviated cycle at the beginning, and then the full quarter cycle will take everything else and do that. So we have. Upgrades to HR, account receivable, position control, and employee self service. And it's all driven by taxes, too, and the changes that happen at the calendar year on that. Uh, in fact, we got really lucky last year that we had taken on doing the updates when we did, because if we had waited even a month later, we would have been behind the ball on a lot of things we we're talking about. Uh, because we had learned that tax updates previous to that were kind of a, a non issue. You just Put in one file and you're done. It turned out that that tax update actually had prerequisites that led to almost all the other updates had to be in place for it to happen. Uh, we got lucky, honestly. And now that we're doing this on a quarterly update or quarterly cycle, uh, we won't end up in that position again. Thank you. Anything else? I see in the space in the room, and not to necessarily like <laughs> point fingers. But I would imagine, are you our Me? no? Oh, no. Right. <laughs> I would imagine you're our new um, gal in the presence office doing 
Oh, that's okay. All right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I was all excited. <laughs> One thing I've there is a new person in our office, though, working in the curriculum and scheduling <laughs> department, and it's Shauna Hunter. She was previously actually working with Eiler, but she's our new schedule coordinator. <laughs> One thing I've noticed that we've improved upon, and uh, part of it's conscious and part of it's the change management that we're doing, uh, we're communicating as a campus back and forth on this team much better. Uh, I feel like we're always in the loop. And things don't seem to catch us off guard as much. Um, and you're in the loop. And I think that's fantastic. That's something that we've known that we can always improve upon. Uh, and I think we're doing a great job on that as well. All right. Well, we've recorded this. This will be available on YouTube, just like usual. Uh, one of our challenges moving forward is always finding more subjects for banner bunches. So let us know if there's anything in banner that is a pain point, you'd love to learn more about, or you think others would benefit from having one of these. Um, we're going to have one in February, March, and April, and May. Uh, we probably won't have one over the summer. Last year we learned that people aren't here after the summer and don't show up to these. So uh, we work on that as well. Um, yeah, but we appreciate you coming here. Listen in and let us know uh, if you have any questions. No one, some people over in our area had. So I come when you talked about changing the baseline with the sewing and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people have missed it. And so they had used mm -hmm. the old one a lot to look and search by birthday and by address and such. Mm -hmm. And then they couldn't figure out how to do that now that that had changed. And so I was able to help them with it. But they thought maybe if you did another training on how to search. And that's other ways, matter, right? well, with healthcare and stuff, it was like a week. Yeah. I had some questions and everything. So let me grab your contact info, and we'll schedule something. I'm more than happy to have these. They're also available online, uh, but we may not have gotten into that granular detail in the banner bunch. And I know there's some issues around the way data birth searching works now, and that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>